Where can you find a video that includes the rise of the world's most dynamic sport, powerful, corrupt unions, their politician cronies, and this? Stay tuned to find out. Mixed martial arts, it's one of the fastest growing sports in the world today with its athletes now being some of the most popular in the world. This is a sport that is now practiced across nearly every state in this great country. One notable exception, however, is the state of New York. Leftists have been late to hop on the freedom bandwagon in this state and instead insist on banning it. But before we get to that, for those who don't know, uh, let me give you a brief introduction on the history of how this great sport came to be. But my father realized that in order to showcase the effectiveness of Gracie Jiu Jitsu to the world, it had to be put on television. So that's what inspired him to create the Ultimate Fighting Championship. He chose his younger brother, Hoist, to represent our family's fighting system. Hoist went in there, defeated those giants, winning three out of the first four UFCs, and uh, the rest was history. Yes, folks, as a matter of fact, before it was sanctioned and came to be the sport that it is today, the activity wasn't all too safe and people did have reason to be concerned. When I first started fighting, there were no weight divisions, no time limit. Like no rules, no gloves, anything goes. The only rules were no biting and no eye, eye gouging. You could grab their hair, you could hit to the groin, you could punch to the back of the head, elbow to the back of the head, things like that. You no, know, he tapped, I let go, then we start fighting again, then he tapped, I let go. And then on the last one, I didn't let go, you know, until the ref really said it was over, you know? But before you go and say that loser politicians had reason to ban it, understand that things have changed. Now there are, you know, rounds, weight divisions, uh, no striking to the spine, no striking to the back of the head, no kicking a downed opponent, no kneeing a downed opponent. You know, a lot of different things have been put in place for the safety of the athletes. In, in reality, the sport evolved a lot. Today is a sport, and I can see even as an Olympic sport in the near future. You know, it's, it's, uh, you have amazing athletes now, and you have the rounds, you have the weight divisions. It's, it became a sport. It can date itself back to the 2001 Nevada State Legislature, where they're attempting to get a law passed. When you do that, you must identify what it is you're encompassing. So they came up with the term mixed martial arts, MMA. And that's very important to know. It's very important because uh, at times you'll hear people, um, and, and generally, if not always, in a negative fashion speak of MMA. Well, these two kids were out on the playground doing MMA and somebody got hurt. And I'm going, well, wait just a second. We don't do MMA on playgrounds. That, that MMA is a legal term. If it's not done legally, if it's not regulated, if it's not in a state, uh, that welcomes it, regulates it, oversees it. It's not MMA. It's something else. It's something that may resemble it or look like it in your opinion. But if there was no way in, if there was no sanctioning, if there was no government regulatory body, it's not MMA. MMA is a legal term. Because of these unified rules, uh, the sport became much safer, wildly popular, not to mention the huge amounts of revenue generated to local economies hosting these live sporting events. And it's for that reason that most major sanctioning athletic bodies uh, across the country came to be very enthusiastically on board with the sport of MMA. Nevada, California, New Jersey, Ohio, the list goes on and on. One notable exception, however, would be the state of New York. As a matter of fact, politicians in New York have been some of the most vocal opponents condemning the sport. The greatest problem I find with mixed martial arts or ultimate fighting is that it's violent. The opponent in boxing cannot slam them in the head. There's a purpose for that. And the reason is safety. Well, when you combine the two, that's when you have the problem. Actually, mixed martial arts is safer than boxing. Wait, wait, let me get this there straight. Mr. White, you're telling me that it's safer to be a boxer than to go into ultimate fighting where you're in a little cage and you can kick somebody, use your elbow, your knee, you can just beat the living daylights out of them any way, in shape, or form. Come on, who's going to buy Absolutely. That, There's never been a death or serious injury in the 12-year history of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. If my son told me that he was going to be a professional boxer, I would be very worried. But in reality, it's the train. He's getting hit every day, every day. So that for sure is going to have a, a, a long last damaging on your brain. And we have different options. We have finishing holds, we have takedowns. See, in mixed martial arts, a fight can end a variety of ways, notably submissions. I can knee bar, I can choke hold, I can toe hold. He taps out, and we both walk away with our health intact. Not so in boxing. 
Even if you look at the actual knockouts in the sport of mixed martial arts, a fighter's out, the ref steps in and calls it to preserve his safety. Not so in boxing. A guy can get beaten into oblivion, unconscious on the ground, the ref gives him a standing eight count, he stands back up to continue to absorb more blunt force trauma to the brain. See, what's dangerous in a fight is limiting one's natural defense options. You can clinch, you can take down, you can wrestle. In boxing, the referee separates you and says, no, 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 no. Keep pounding each other in the face, causing more blunt trauma to the brain repeatedly, and we all know how that ends up for boxers long term. I won't go even there. You know what I'm saying? And then Simba, I mean Kimba, what do we call him? Kimba Slice. They ain't want that. To then, what you call Kimba? So the dude said, well, I'm, I'm gonna walk with James Tony and baptize him to the UFC. Fine. So we've established that it's not really a safety issue, but don't take my word for it. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. And I believe that violence begets violence. Now in New York State, the legislature and the governor constantly are trying to do away with violence. Violence in schools, violence in our urban cities. Oh, so the state of New York doesn't host any boxing, football, or hockey events? Of course that's not the case. See, the banning of the sport of mixed martial arts in 2012 makes no sense to any freedom-loving American. That is, until you start doing a little more digging and do a little research. Basically, it comes down to the fact that in Nevada, in the state of Nevada, um, the Fertitta brothers, who own a majority of the UFC, they also run the Powell Station Casinos, uh, the Station Casinos over in, uh, in Nevada. And they have been battling with the Culinary Union over in Nevada for a very long time um, because the Culinary Union wants their uh, hotels to be and, and casinos to be uh, unionized. New York being a, a very strong union state, uh, they have influence here. Their parent company is this group Unite Here, which uh, are the ones who are lobbying against MMA, and uh, they're the ones who are stopping it. So basically, um, you know, they did very well in the Senate, they made it, they passed all the votes, and then they don't even make it to, to the point where uh, Sheldon Silver is even going to open this to a vote. The bigger thing at play is the politicians that are keeping it out are being dishonest with their people. You can't do that as a politician. If you want to come forward and say, listen, we're having some conflicting things here. I'm a union guy. I got into office off the unions. The unions have a problem that, that dates all the way across the country uh, with some members of Zufa, which, which own the UFC. If they want to come out and say that, fine. It really has nothing to do with the sport. It has to do with their issue with the UFC. And their issue with the UFC is really their issue with the Fertitta brothers. And their issue with the Fertitta brothers really stems um, to this, this issue in Nevada where they're not unionizing their, their casinos. Okay, so the very large, very powerful culinary union seem to be wanting to strong arm members of the UFC based on a personal business decision issue. But could that have anything to do with Bob Riley and Mr. Silver in New York so vocally and baselessly condemning the sport? Well, as I've shown on my channel many times, when you want to think of the corrupt relationship between lobbyists and government, big oil, big pharma, while they sound sexy in the media, are nowhere near as powerful as big unions. And one thing about unions is they really understand the process. They truly are ingrained and they understand the political process and they often get their way through that. Sometimes it's by bullying, sometimes it's by buying, but they work within the rules, they understand the process. But you need to be honest about it. And if you think the culinary union is the only one that understands the process, you're wrong. They are small. So if a politician in New York is willing to lie to protect them, imagine what he's gonna do for the drug companies. Imagine what he's gonna do for the big conglomerates. Okay, so at the end of the day, who does this really hurt? Well, for one, certainly the athletes making a living in this sport. Well, for me, it was, you know, everybody comes from a different background, but for me, I was in college, had planned on wrestling in college, and originally actually planned on playing football in college, but uh, my mom got sick with heart problems, so I had to leave school, go home and take care of her. I was working three jobs, pouring concrete during the day, and then bartending at night at a couple different clubs. And, um, just was not able to keep up. I'm, I'm very fortunate in that I, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm not uh, forced to this position. I haven't been drafted. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a volunteer in the Army. I, I'm here because I want to be here. The downside is, my goodness, it's so hard. The day-to-day uh, the -day is so hard. I started thinking, well, there's got to be a, a way to make chunks of money. And so I started fighting professional kickboxing and boxing matches and tough main contests and anything I could at the time. And then the UFC came out and uh, 
I saw that that was my sport. You know, that was my way of winning the world title, making some money to help my mom out, things like that. I get up when it's dark. I go to bed when it's dark. Every day. It doesn't matter if it's a holiday, weekend. You, you encompass your daily chores and just a matter of taking care of the animals and the property. Uh, in with training and you're training to, to absolute exhaustion uh, twice a day. I, I think it made me, uh, made me grow up, you know, because when you've got an empty refrigerator and you know you got a sick mom, you, well, you either become a man or you completely fail, you know, so it, it uh, obviously changed my life for the better. This is um, something I chose to do. Someday it will be gone. I won't be doing it anymore uh, and I'll miss it when that day comes. But more importantly, the citizens of New York, as the UFC and MMA have proven to generate huge revenues in any city they visit. Reports have increased local revenue as high as $40 million in Toronto after a single event was held. $40 million! Imagine what New Yorkers could do with all that money. That's a lot of subway rides and bagel farts. Let's be fair. We don't need New York. But New York sure could use us. We don't have to do business in New York. We can be plenty successful. We are, and we're not in New York. New York is struggling, and we can show that we can bring $10 million to an economy in a five-day period. We can show those numbers. Well, I would say it certainly hurts the people who own businesses in New York because there's going to be a, an influx, a massive amount of fans are going to be at the show, hotels, food servers. This is a revenue to be generated to the state of New York. You know, it should be generated for the state here and it's not being because stupid politicians are holding back. So folks, nobody is forced into the octagon and this is far from a blood sport. This is a serious mainstream sport consisting of athletes, all of whom are sons, brothers, fathers, and fellow Americans. And don't let corrupt politicians financially indebted to even more corrupt unions for their political safety try and tell you otherwise. So whether you're a fan of the sport or not, if you're a fan of freedom, if you're a fan of a government for the people, by the people, and you want to make a difference, forward this video along and contact your local representative. It's time to keep these schmohawks accountable. The problem is when a politician comes out and he lies, if a guy is willing to lie about a sport that doesn't matter, what's he willing to do on state health care? What's he willing to do on state welfare? What's he willing to do on state education of the kids? What's he willing to do uh, on police services and emergency services for seniors? If he's willing to lie to keep a sport out, who else can buy it?